wanted a juggling trick named after me, as I'm sure many jugglers do. And I may have just discovered a new one. Um, I'm going to narcissistically suggest that we call it Reasons Rebound. Uh, but if anybody's seen this trick somewhere else, or they can think of a better name given the structure of it, definitely let me know, and I will consider <laughs> giving up on that. Uh, let me try to show you what it should look like. Now, it's still a little bit shaky for me since I've only been doing it for about a day, but this is the general appearance. <laughs> you see, there's this sort of rebound move where a ball switches directions and ends up uh, moving next to another one in the air. Alright, one more time. Right. I came up with this while playing with this thing which, while I'm making up terminology, I guess I'll call a forked double rebound. So you start out with two balls forked, throw them towards each other so that they would collide, and then before they're able to collide, you sneak your hands past the balls and tap them back the way they came, catching them back on the original hands. That wasn't a very good one. It's pretty difficult. So I was looking for a way to uh, incorporate the easier version of this, which is just using regular throws, uh, throw balls towards each other, and only one hand taps away the other ball, like this. You can do that both sides. And I was looking for a way to incorporate that into a full three ball pattern, and that's when I came up with this pattern. Okay, so I'm going to try to teach it to you. The first thing is to learn this throw here. So basically, you just swing your arms in circles opposite each other, throw the balls towards each other so they hit each other. And then one of your hands will go a little bit faster than the ball it threw, and sneak in front and just kind of tap the other ball that's approaching with the last knuckles on your fingers, like this. And if you're going at around the same speed as you threw the ball at, then it'll end up pushing that ball so that it goes at the same speed as the one you're throwing. So they end up hopefully kind of following each other at about the same height as they both fall. And that's the idea. And you can do this on both sides. Now, I'm not very good at the height thing yet, but it is important to try to make sure that they end up vertically aligned like this next to each other when they're falling. So practice that for a bit. Now you'll notice that as you're doing that rebound push, the other hand is just kind of sitting there for a second. And that gap is enough to put a third ball in. So the idea is you're going to start with one ball in each hand. You're going to throw one up between them, so it's kind of your starting triangle position. And as that ball starts to fall, you're going to do your throw. And uh, that middle ball is going to fall into the hand that has a gap. So the one that's not doing the rebound. Like that. And all you're going to do is kind of shuttle it underneath your hand that's doing the push, and throw it up on a column on the right side of your body. So that ball goes from the center to the right side of your body. And you'll notice that these two balls that you're doing the sort of rebound push with both end up on the left and center of your body. So they kind of rearrange themselves. You go from having this guy in the center and the two here on the left and right to this guy in the center, this guy on the left, and the one you just threw big on the right. So the whole pattern kind of shifts over. At this point, you've got one ball in the air on your right that you've just thrown up, and you're holding on to two over here. And all you're going to do is switch your right hand onto that ball. So you're throwing up the center ball and catching that one on the right. And you're back in the middle again with the triangle starting position. And now you can either just do the same direction again, repeating the pattern. It gets difficult. Or you can switch directions and do the other side. Like that. And that's the full pattern. Now the crucial timing element I've noticed here that seems to trip me up a lot is that underarm column throw on the opposite side of your body. And that seems to kind of set the timing for uh, being able to catch and finish during your rebound thing and then switch back over to it. And if you don't go high enough there, you're going to run into some trouble. So try to keep your attention on that ball and make sure you go really high enough with it that you don't just kind of leave it down there to fall. Because that will definitely mess you up. Now there is another faster version of the pattern you could do where you don't switch the balls around. It's always the same two that are being rebounded. And this is basically a version of one-up, two-up, where instead of doing crosses, uh, you would do the rebound. So what you can do, you see I'm doing one-up, two-up, and I'm going to do a rebound, and then I would switch the balls from here back to around the center ball, since they both end up on the left side of the center ball. You then have to switch them back. See that? Oops. So theoretically, you could just do this constantly. I haven't really been able to do it yet. You have to at least take a break between them. But in theory, you could just come back and immediately keep going. And you could even, in fact, switch directions. <laughs> so I think that is the theoretical fastest version 
of this pattern, but clearly it's a bit beyond my skills right now. I really want to be able to do it at least once. Left, right. <laughs> so if that one had stayed in the center, that would be the pattern. Yeah, it's a little crazy, but I'd love to see somebody do that sometime. <laughs> one last time. The reasons rebound. There you go. Okay. Something like that. <laughs> Good luck and enjoy, and please let me know if this is new or you've seen it before or what.